It, coalition senators supporting that motion by One Nation in the upper house on vaccine mandates. You've got uh, the PM with a great speech bringing in that long-awaited religious freedom legislation. Some of the moderates already saying that they're unlikely to vote for it. Mm. And that real surprise to me, Bridget Archer crossing the floor, I think that's probably the most worrying. They want to win an election. Not a lot of unity on display. Mm. They better smarten up the coalition next week, don't you think? Yeah, it's been a really scrappy week, hasn't it, Peter? The optics are not good. You know, Scott Morrison trying to herd cats there in Canberra at the moment. Next week will be crucial. I think the unity has to come back next week. Uh, it'll be interesting to see exactly how he gets them back on track. The Labor Party very much taking this as an opportunity to suggest that if you can't govern your own party, how can you govern the country? But I I've got a question for you, Peter Credlin. If the Labor Party, if a Labor MP was to cross the floor in Canberra at the moment, what would their future be? Uh, expulsion. Uh, Labor Party yes, cannot exactly. cross the floor at any stage and remain in the party. I mean, just this is an important point, you know, if they're crossing the floor a Liberal MP or a National Party MP on legislation, that's almost acting with conscience. That's allowed. Mm. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I'm on that side of the fence and not the other. It, it's almost not encouraged. You don't want to encourage it. But you have to give people the latitude to do that. Where I think Archer was a surprise, Gleeso, was that was about a motion. It was a motion, mm. not a big deal, so the fa it, it, not yeah. effective in any way. So what she was doing was really a shot across the bow of the Prime Minister. I think that's where it was worrying. And I'll say it again, I would be fearing she'll go into the ranks of the crossbench if she's not handled carefully enough. Mm. Oh, without question. And I think, you know, you've got to ask, as the Prime Minister has obviously asked, what was the whip doing? What was the, the numbers men and numbers women doing? Because that was a surprise. She was clearly upset. It was clearly something that she'd laboured across long and hard. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we saw it here in Queensland with the euthanasia bill. You know, everyone was given a conscience mm. vote. But if you're in the Labor Party and you didn't vote for it, you were in big trouble. Yeah, I'd want to hope that Archer went and saw the Prime Minister and that she crossed the floor as a last resort. I don't know that it's a top of mind issue for her seat of Bass there in northern Tasmania. I think uh, cost of living and uh, housing interest rates mm. and those sorts of things are very much front of mind. So I'm not so sure, I'm not so sure she's being a team player there. Um, Peter Dutton today, a press club, an absolute mm. cracker of a speech, the sort of backbone you want to see from a minister. I went through that speech in detail at the top of the show. But what did you make uh, of his very strong language in relation to Taiwan, in relation to China? Uh, this is where the government needs to go, I think, ministers like Dutton laying out a positive agenda and then backing it in. Thank goodness for Peter Dutton. Thank goodness he's our defence minister. Look, I think the next election will unquestionably be fought along the lines of national security and, of course, the economy. I think climate change will run a very distant third. So to see that strong leadership today from Dutton, to, to, to lay it all on the table and say, listen, you know, this has got hallmarks of the 1930s. We have to be proactive. We cannot sit back and allow China to dictate to us. And those statistics that he rolled out, you know, that, that China has the biggest naval fleet in the world, that they have you know, nuclear capabilities triple what they did 20 years ago. That's extraordinary. And that says to us, a lot of Australians, that when it comes to the next election, if you want a strong national security outlook, well, you're going to get it from the Morrison government and you're certainly going to get it from Peter Dutton. Mm. And they will hone in on that in the lead up to the next election, saying that Labor is soft on national security. Mm, Peter Dutton or Christina Keneally? I mean, you take your pick, Australia. Uh, what about all the shambolic uh, stuff that's gone on in Queensland this week? We got an apology today from the Health Minister, Yvette Darth. That's been a, a couple of days coming, but this was all about the PCR tests. We also know, mm. too, that there's some dodginess, dodginess uh, in their renewable uh, energy oh. calculation, the figures about how much renewable energy. Tell us, uh, tell us what we know. OK, well, let's deal with the renewables first. Mick De Brenny, slick Mick, he's been caught out again, fudging the figures, suggesting that Labor was much more on target to hit their renewables 50% by 2030. The auditors come out today and said that's wrong. 
they are way off, mar off the mark and you know, have a Labor government sort of espousing their climate policies and telling porkies about it is not a good look. I'm sure Anthony Albanese won't be too impressed about that. As far as the PCR test, well, the Premier has this week been exposed as an emperor with no clothes. I mean, this was a pretty simple sort of equation. It was effectively a $150 border tax that they were implementing, the Palaszczuk government, and they wouldn't bend, even though medical experts were saying, you can have the two rapid antigen tests within 72 hours, it'll have the same effectiveness as a PCR. In the end, uh, Greg Hunt had to intervene and sort it out, and ironically, the people of New South Wales and Victoria who were coming to Queensland, uh, you know, the, the New South Wales and Victorian taxpayers will be picking up the bill there. But look, it was another example of their incompetence. They are hopeless when presented with a problem, and every time they get presented with a problem, guess what? They blame Canberra. People are sick of it. You lost in Queensland today one of the Labor luminaries of the past, long battle with cancer. Tell us mm. more. Well, Keith DeLacy, yes, 81. Uh, I actually interviewed Keith uh, just two months ago. He came out swinging. He said the Labor Party had lost its way, that it was that it had gone too woke, that it had gone too left. He was the son of the local leader of the Communist Party in Cairns when he grew up. Um, Peter Beattie referred to him as probably Queensland's best Labor treasurer of all time. He delivered surplus after surplus. He was fiscally, you know, his fiscal austerity was renowned. Uh, and, uh, you know, a great Queenslander we lost today, uh, Peter. 